You're watching the Learning Channel. July 1994, and beyond the moon Europa, the serenity of Jupiter is about to be disturbed. The giant planet is under attack. One after another, the fragments of a comet slam into Jupiter at 40 miles a second. Scientists are spellbound because for the first time, they predicted these cosmic catastrophes. To Jupiter, 1,300 times bigger than the Earth, they were pinpricks. But had just one of the larger fragments hit the Earth, there'd have been cataclysm. Imagine a rock from space, three miles across, plunging into the Gulf of Mexico. 65 million years ago, a missile nearly twice that size may have hit the Earth. It's a theory, but many scientists believe it devastated life on Earth and ended forever the rule of the dinosaurs. Even now, at night, the skies flare with debris from outer space. Were a fragment no bigger than a city block to hit us, it would detonate like several atomic bombs. This would be the result on America's northeast, desolation from Boston to Washington. The tranquility of the heavens belies such deathly blows. But the cosmos is filled with violence, epic eruptions of energy that make flea bites of catastrophes on Earth. Our galaxy is home to hundreds of millions of stars. Some, like our sun, live solitary lives. Others clump together, and where stars foregather, catastrophe can come calling. Like happy spouses, most double stars get along, but if one of them is a dwarf star, there can be fireworks. This picture from the Hubble Space Telescope captures such a flare-up. It's a case of stellar indigestion, the culprit, a dense white dwarf. So much matter is being drawn from the big star by the supergravity of the dwarf that the dwarf goes bang. Through its clear eye and Earth orbit, the Hubble telescope caught the aftermath of such an explosion in 1992. Here it is. A ring of stellar debris blasts outward into space. Astronomers call it a nova. Many dwarfs and giants suffer nova eruptions again and again. Each time, matter builds up around the dwarf star until catastrophe, a nova detonation. Our galaxy is littered with the aftermath of catastrophe. The wreckage of ancient stars strewn light years across space. In 1987, high in the Chilean Andes, astronomers witnessed such a convulsion. 
their view of the southern skies included two wispy patches of light, the Magellanic Clouds, their companion galaxies, satellites to our own Milky Way. It was in the large cloud, 170,000 light years away, that something flared. A previously faint star suddenly became one of the brightest points in the sky. There it is, lower right. For the first time since the invention of the telescope, astronomers had found a nearby supernova. From South America, word was zipped to the Anglo-Australian Observatory in New South Wales. Here, scientists had one of the best vantage points on Earth. And this is what they were studying. A giant blue star had blown itself apart, a pop like a cosmic flashbulb. Within months of the explosion, the Australians had captured this extraordinary image. Concentric rings, shells of light racing outward through the galaxy. The rings illuminated material between the stars, creating a three-dimensional effect. And, played in time-lapse, this was the very blast of the supernova. In this Hubble image, dust from the blast shows red. The yellow ring is material ejected before the explosion. What triggers a supernova? For most of its life, a giant star burns fierce and bright by converting hydrogen into helium, then helium into carbon, and so on, into ever heavier elements. Finally, when iron is formed, nuclear reaction stops, gravity prevails, and the core collapses. The superstar goes bang. As matter is shed into space, a remnant often remains. It's a tiny neutron star, a pulsar, so dense that a grain of its material weighs a million tons. Spinning many times a second, it beams energy like a celestial lighthouse. But a much bigger superstar will go a stage further. It will collapse to form a greater catastrophe, a black hole. Wonders of the Universe will continue on TLC. Clifford Stahl needs a kidney donor, his own son. Join us for the kidney transplant. I'll see. On the cosmic scale, a supernova is a minor localized catastrophe. Travel to the heart of some galaxies, perhaps even our own, and you'll find major catastrophe. Over millions of years, enormous black holes shred and devour thousands of stars. Elsewhere, entire galaxies collide and tear each other apart. But the ultimate catastrophe may come billions of years hence. At some point, many astronomers believe, our expanding universe will run out of momentum, stop and rewind, from Big Bang to Big Crunch. Catastrophe has struck our own backyard. The moon, that barren little companion of blue planet Earth, was possibly born of catastrophe, the product of a cosmic collision. Here it is. The Earth is struck by an object the size of Mars. In the maelstrom that follows, the moon condenses, 
It forms from material blasted into space by the impact. For the next four billion years, it shapes up to become the moon we see today. An artist's impression of that fateful splat. In those early days, the whole solar system was under heavy bombardment. Catastrophe was the norm. The moon was no exception. Impacts cratered its molten surface. Even as it cooled, the new formed crust was continually dented, smack after smack of cosmic debris blasting gigantic craters. Later, they'd fill with lava flowing from the interior. In time, it would solidify to form the broad, dark plains we see today, the so-called lunar seas. There are two faces to our moon. This one, always hidden from Earth, is heavily cratered with bright highland regions. And this one, the face we always see from Earth, is cratered, but with those broad, dark plains. In close-up, these are the imprints of the countless catastrophes that have shaped our moon. Free of the erosion of wind and water, the pristine record of a long and violent past. This is Ganymede, a moon of Jupiter, another ancient and battered face. But this one is geologically young, the smoother features of Triton, a moon of Neptune. And here's the mark of just one catastrophe, a massive impact crater on Mimas, an icy moon of Saturn. Had the missile been bigger, Mimas would be no more. Catastrophe. Some astronomers suggest that Uranus was once dealt such a blow that the giant planet was knocked 98 degrees off kilter. Such dust is left behind by comets. As our orbit intercepts a comet trail, the dust collides with the Earth. Tiny grains burn up harmlessly in the upper atmosphere. We see them as shooting stars.